I'm Marcy Eberts with System Education, and we are going to start some education on the new Zoll R series defibrillator. All the educators in the System Education Department have been trained on this, so if you have any questions after this video, find your educator and ask your questions. Hey, this is our new Zoll R series defibrillator, and we're giving you a quick in service via video. So, quick overview of our new defibrillator on the top here. You'll notice three cords. Um, this one is the one that delivers the jewels. Uh, this is the EKG cable, and this is for capnography. Now these three cords will always stay with the machine. They're not disposable, just keep them plugged in. Also on the top, you'll see the paper tray. So very easy to load, nothing to thread or anything, just comes in a stack, goes in easily, pull out a little bit, paper tray's ready to go. This is also where the battery is. Uh, you can check your battery by hitting that button right there, it'll light up to show you that it's working. It can also pop it up in and out really easily. You'll notice on the front here, you'll have these lights that tell you, it's blinking right now to tell me that my battery's not in. So I'll put it back in to make it happy. You see this green one is telling us it's plugged into the wall. Um, this now is yellow because it's charging. Um, it'll turn green when it's fully charged. Um, also right here on the front, you'll see this red X. So this is a very smart machine and every morning at three o'clock in the morning uh, it will silently wake up and run through over a hundred self checks. One of those checks uh, involves knowing that the pads which are supposed to be continuously plugged into the machine um, it will check the expiration date on the pads for you and it will let you know in the morning uh, if it didn't pass that check. It will also do the daily defibrillation check, um, so no more having to check our defibs by plugging into that little box and uh, checking a, a defibrillation charge into that. So instead, we just leave it plug, leave our therapy cable plugged into pads all the time, and every morning at 3 a.m., it will just by itself deliver a shock into there of 30 joules and continue on its way. Now, last night, it wasn't plugged in, so instead of a green, X, green check mark here, we have a red X saying that it failed its self-test because it wasn't plugged in. So, if that ever happens to you, this is how you get rid of it. You take this um, therapy cable and plug it right here into the side of the machine it's, and deliver that 30 joule uh, charge right into the machine itself. So you'll just turn this to defib we're going to select the energy down to 30 joules, charge, and just shock it right into the machine itself. It started printing, so I'm going to hit recorder to make that stop. And now you can see that my red X has been replaced with a green check. It doesn't light up, it's just there. Um, so now we know that it's good to go, but we're going to plug it into the pads. This is how it should be. Um, every all the time. It should just be a resting state plugged into the pads. So when you ever need it, you don't have to fumble around with that cord. You can just open the pads and get started. Okay, let's go over the other functions of the front of the machine. So this is like the main dial. It's going to um, have one function of monitor. So you could use this, like if you're going to transport a patient and you just wanted to use it um, as a monitor, you can use it as a monitor this way. Instead of using the pads though, you would want to use just a three lead EKG. So that cable is back here in the, in the little net holder and you would just plug those into your patient there and plug your, um, your therapy cable. Check that. So that um, is how it would be configured for just the monitor. Um, some buttons you might need to use while you're monitoring are here to change the lead. If you're not using the pads, it comes on automatically to look for the pads. So you need to change the lead to tell it to look for the electrodes instead. You might um, adjust the gain by using the size button. The other two buttons on here are to shush your alarms and to print a strip. That's about it on the monitor side. The next one is um, the pacer function. So that's for somebody who had a really low heart rate. You could adjust here with, um, with rate and with the milliamps out output.
function for us on our defibrillator, of course, is the defib mode. So the defib mode, to use it as an AED, you would just um, turn that to defib, hit analyze, and listen to the prompt. So just to use it as an AED, your step one is defib, step two is analyze, and then step three is shock if this shock is advised. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about these special pads. So our special pads that are supposed to always be plugged in to our machine so it's ready to go. These special pads are called one-step pads. And the reason for that is because you only need these pads and not pads plus electrodes, as these special pads have built-in three, elect three lead electrodes. So the placement of these pads is important because instead of um, both going on the front of the chest, Zoll recommends this triangle pad to be placed on the front and the other rectangular pad to go on the back. So like they've done on this mannequin. Anterior posterior placement. It tells you right here on the pads to place this one first. So put the one on the back first and then the one on the front second. Also, you'll see this little puck, hockey puck type thing, oval hockey puck. It is a, a CPR sensor that you're gonna see all the features of in a minute. Um, on a like normal sized person, this would go right here, just all in one piece, very easy to stick it on like this. If you have a, a large person, a woman with a large breast, it's okay to tear this apart. It's very important that this CPR sensor goes on the sternum, you'll be doing your chest compressions right on top of that. So it needs to go right on the lower half of the sternum where you want to do good chest compressions. And then this patch is very important to go over the heart. So we'll um, place those according to the picture. Also, I'll tell you that we have pediatric pads. Let us all pause and pray to God that we never have to code a child. But if we do, um, we have pads. If you, your unit has pediatrics, you'll have these um, pediatric pads. So they have the pictures similarly, anterior, posterior placement. Um, the CPR feedback device goes on the sternum. And then when you plug this in, it automatically tells the defibrillator that you have a child hooked up. So it is going to dial down the joules for you and um, it will also, um, give you feedback that's appropriate for a child. I was going into my patient's room and, good morning, I'm just giving you your meds, and then all of a sudden his eyes roll back and he goes unresponsive. Are you okay, are you okay, help, somebody call a code, and I start chest compressions while I wait for the defib to come. So as soon as the, the defibrillator arrives, Hopefully I'll have a buddy to help me putting on the, on the pads appropriately. And I'm gonna uh, continue CPR while I turn this monitor on, flip it right to defib. Okay, as soon as it's on, I'm gonna hit analyze. Analyze tells me to stand clear. Now that button is lit up, telling me to shock it. Clear the patient. Deliver the shock. Perform CPR. Right back on the chest. Push harder. I wasn't pushing hard enough, so it reminds me to push harder. And it tells me I'm doing a good job. <laughs> Or if I slow down too much. Get a reminder metronome. It tells me to speed up. As long as it's quiet, I'm doing a good job.
Okay, so that's our new Zoll R series defibrillator. If you want more information, there's a HealthStream module. Uh, you can just sign up on HealthStream. It's a Zoll online training, and you can take that uh, that module. It's put together by the company, and it's uh, very good and very in depth.